What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, welcome back to the subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon uh, so you can be notified of when we drop videos and also when we do live streams. We do a lot of really good live streams on the channel. We usually do them in the morning uh, and we also do them from time to time in the evening. So I hope you accept my invitation to join. It is with great pleasure that I'm going to talk about a, about a boxing match that I've been hoping would happen for a while. Ever since I watched a an interview by Khalid Plant talking about David Benavitez, when Khalid Plant talked about Jose uh, Escatigui and said that he thought Escatigui was the boogeyman, 168 pounds, and he thought that Escatigui could beat anybody at 160 68 pounds, including Dave, uh, David Benavitez. And including Jay, he said he believed that he would that he could beat David Benavides and that he would knock out James DeGale, but that he, Khalid Plant, would be ready to fight him tomorrow. And he explained why it is that he thinks that he's, you know, that he's a top, that he's one of the top and up and coming 168 pounders. And when you hear him say that he's willing to fight somebody tomorrow, and then it winds up that the IBF orders the bout, and you gotta say, okay, well, this guy's be having his eyes on Oscar Gee. Hey, let's make it happen. And the two styles, it's classic. That's a classic style. You got the boxer, you got the slick boxer who hits and doesn't get hit. Very athletic, very fat, you know, very fast, very athletic counter puncher who can fight on the inside, can fight, who can fight on the outside, who can fight at mid range. Um, young, I think he's 26 years old. This being, um, Caleb Plant, 26 years old, only 17 and 0, but I think an advance is not known as a is a super heavy puncher, but it's somebody that gets the deal, gets the job done, and gets the job done easy, right? Makes it look makes it look easy. Now, admittedly, Khalid Plant has not had you know has not fought super tough competition other than his last bout, which was Rogelio Medina and uh, Porky Medina who also, by the way, had lost to, uh, who also fought Jose Escadegui. Uh, But I do believe that, and it might have been, because it, it could be because it was a little bit later in Porky Medina's, uh, or Rogelio Porky Medina's career, but I think Caleb Plant looked a little better with uh, Medina because Medina, who's usually a very, very active boxer, somebody that really does throw a lot of punches, known for throwing hundreds of punches around, had his punch, his punch output dropped to about 50 uh, per round, uh, thrown about 50 per round against uh, Caleb Plant. And I think he might have landed like five or six punches a, land, a round against uh, Khalid Plant. And while you have a very, very hard puncher and a very aggressive boxer like, like uh, Jose Escadegui, if you can't land, it don't matter. You can throw all day if you can't hit somebody. And Khalid Plant is one of those guys that really can stand right in the pocket with you and make you miss. Now, he, he again, he's early in his career, but, man, I'm telling you, I think this could be a classic bout, man. And I think it's one that can – I definitely think it's one that's going to get made because I can't see b- – both of those guys are fighting on the PBC. Neither one of them – Khalid uh, – Jose Escadegui just acted like, you know, whatever – like there's nothing that uh there's nothing that Caleb Plant can can do with me, right? But Caleb Plant is saying, look, there's something I can do with you. He's like, everybody think he's the big bag boogeyman, but let's go. I'm willing to do it. And I loved I love the attitude of Caleb Plant in that regard. And the fight I definitely believe is gonna be I definitely think that can be classic, and I think Khalid Plant can win. It's one of these situations where I would say that. You know, the odds are going to be heavily in favor of Jose Escadegui and that, but Jose Escadegui to me, I think he has more than one. I wouldn't say he's one dimensional because he can fight on the back foot. He can fight moving forward. So he will, he can switch it up. He, from my understanding, he's got a very good ba- amateur bra- background and I've seen him, I've seen him on the back foot against Medina. I've also seen him get really, really, really pressed by, uh, Korobov, which is the which is the lost 
the only real like official loss where it went all the went the distance and the scorecards were against him. Uh, that being uh, Karpov, like I said, on the undercard of Terrence Crawford uh, versus it was on the undercard of Terrence Crawford versus uh, Yuriokas Gamboa back in 2014. But you know, other than that fight, and I think you know that was a kind of a that was a tough fight with Karpov, man. That was a, another undefeated fighter, uh, a southpaw. A southpaw that really pressed the action was very good, a very good counter puncher, just a good all around solid, strong fighter that he lost to in a close decision. But, um, and then the other tough fight that I thought he was in was when he went the distance with Rogelio Medina or, or Porky Medina, because there was times when Porky Medina got uh, got Uscadegui on the back foot, and without a doubt, Porky Medina gave Uscadegui a much better bout, much better fight than than Andre Durrell, Andre Durrell did. The concern for me, there's concerns that I have for both of these guys, is one, that Escadegui is, that Escadegui throw, he does throw straight punches. I mean, he has a straight, he has a good jab. He'll throw the straight right, but I don't know, I don't know how well he fights on the inside. And I don't know what he's going to do with a guy that has better foot speed than a guy that, and the guy that can has that many, that many dimensions to his game like Khalid Plant. But, Khalid Plant, the downside on Khalid Plant is Khalid Plant is so inexperienced. At least on the professional level, he's inexperienced. With just 17, just 17 bouts to his name, stepping up and fighting for the IBF title against Uskadagi, a guy that really is on a roll. I think that Uskadagi, I think Uskadagi's 29, uh, Plant, I believe, is 26. So there's like a three-year age, there's like a three-year age uh, gap between the two. And there's also a several fight advantage. Like um, Caleb Plant, I believe is is was seventeen and zero. Is seventeen and zero, and you got Escadegui, who's twenty seven, who's twenty seven and two. So Escadegui has like a well, well actually Escadegui is only twenty is only twenty seven. Forgive me, Escadegui is only twenty seven, but he's and Caleb and Caleb Plant is 26. So they're roughly the same age, but the Scottie has a 10 fight has, has 10 fights more under his belt. But this is about, like I said, this is about that. I don't think is going to get where one boxer is going to duck the other. I think that this kid, these cats are really going to do it. They're really going to get in the ring. And Caleb plant doesn't strike me as the type of guy that will say, okay, well, you know, you know, do kind of like Demetrius Andre is doing and say, Oh, you know, I'm not really ready yet. I only have 17. I only have 17 fights. You know, this is the big bag boogeyman. I think, you know, I'm not quite ready for that yet. I need to go sign with Eddie Hearn and match room and you need to give me three or four easy fights. And then maybe you give me three or four easy fights. Then maybe I'll, you know, maybe then I'll bless the IBF with me, uh, you know, allowing them to uh, have me fight for their belt. You know, that type of attitude, man. It doesn't seem like Caleb plan is going to be on the duck train. And, Against a guy like Oscarigu, that speaks a lot for him. And even if, even if uh, Caleb Plant doesn't win the doesn't win the bout, I think it speaks highly of him taking on a fight, um, taking on a fight this early on in his career. So I'd most definitely hope, uh, you know, to get to see this bout. I hope that there's no kind of no craziness that goes on with it, where, you know, somebody ducks. But I just I just can't see that, man. I just can't see I can't see these guys dodging out of this fight, man. And but for the people that think that this is some easy money, no doubt about it, win for Jose Escadegui, I'm not buying it, man. I am not buying it. One of the things, I might be repeating myself, but one of the things that Caleb Plant talked about was the fact that so many people, that not many people really do appreciate what good boxing is. And just to hear him, the intelligence with which he talked about this subject man, it just makes me believe that he really is somebody that believes it and trains for that. He talked about how he was inspiring and how inspiring, you know, it's time for you to get rough. You really to get, you know, work on what you're working on, you know, really get down, really get gritty. But in, in the fight, that's when you finesse, right? That's when you finesse. And I like his mentality. I like how, even though, you know, he's not somebody that's going to get, get baited into, you know, going blow for blow with people when he doesn't have to, you know, he definitely stays busy and he keeps the fight busy, but 
he is a from everything that I can see, this kid Caleb Plant is a true believer in hit and don't get hit. And as long as there's not some, you know, there's not some real heavy, you know, uh, heavy factors leaning towards Jose Escadegui, right? Where you know you're like, I don't think a, a fight with Caleb Plant and Escadegui is going to be something like, you know, um, I hate to use Anthony Joshua in examples, but right now he's about the best example of it. When uh, when Anthony Joshua fought Joseph Parker and jo- Joseph Parker was moving, was moving and hitting him and was hitting and not getting hit and, you know, using his movement and uh, making Anthony Joshua follow, follow him and, you know, that type of deal, the every the, the refs, you know, scored it a wipeout for Anthony Joshua. So for in order for Deontay, for, not kind of dog, in order for Joseph Parker to win that Anthony Joshua fight, you know, he dang sure need, he dang near needs a knockout to get a draw in in the UK. As long as it's not that type of situation or like Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is why I don't understand people thinking that, you know, Gennady Golovkin is going to win this next fight. He might, and I could be wrong. You know, I'll put that, you know, I'll put that little asterisk in and say I might, he might, and I might be wrong. But, you know, you dang near got, like I said, you got to knock out Canelo Alvarez to get a draw. Jose Escadegui, it's not that type of situation. He does not have that type of, he doesn't have that type of reputation. He doesn't have that type of uh, goodwill with the judges. He's not that type of cash cow. So a guy like Khalid Plant, if he outboxes him, might get the decision, right? Even in a situation like when Mark Maurice Hooker fought Terry Flanagan. Um, I had I didn't believe that Maurice Hooker was going to get that decision after doing what I thought he did, which was outbox out Flanagan, but he got it. You know, so there are situations in in boxing where, you know, you're not people are not the judges aren't swayed by ineffective aggression, right? Where they really do see who hits and who didn't doesn't get hit. You know, they consider ring generalship. They consider effective of uh, you know effective defense and um, uh, defense and effective aggression, right? And in that case, man, this is something that's a very winnable fight for Caleb Plant, and I want to see it. I don't, I'm, you know, like I said, if I had to lean towards somebody, the easy pick for this is Jose Scottigy because, you know, that's the guy that's going to be favored. That guy, that's the big boogeyman. But I see, I mean, I see some spots in his record, man. I see some spots in his record, but he definitely has a lot of momentum, but, you know, this is an undefeated fighter that doesn't know doesn't know losses. He's also somebody, like I said, man, is, that is very, very good defensively. And when you have an aggressive fighter that can't land anything against a defensive play person that can pot shot him here and there, man, you you know you got to you got to upset in the making. But anyway, man, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm I'm happy that the IBF ordered it. And with that, I'm out. Peace. <laughs>